Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. We interrupted the fucking. <sighs> I got the results. I just got Kaya's test results. Oh my God. Oh my God. We interrupt this broadcast to, to deliver to you Kaya's breed results, which are now ready, it seems. A perfect mix of three breeds. That's what this says. Three breeds. Now, it gives me the option to either guess her breed or watch this video. We should start the breed game. Does Kaya's breed mix include Boxer? False. Boxer. Our analysis found no noticeable traces of Boxer DNA in Kaya. Does Kaya's breed mix include Tibetan Mastiff? True. Kaya has 48.2% Tibetan Mastiff. Maybe this helps explain a little why she looks or acts the way that she does. Tibetan Mastiff is one giant fluff ball. This ancient breed has been guarding and protecting their owners for thousands of years. Intelligent breed and independent dog loves to be around the people they care about. Fun fact, recently owning a Tibetan Massive has become a sign of social status in China. Does Kaya's breed include Weimaraner? False. Our analysis found no noticeable traces of Weimaraner in DNA. Does Kaya's breed mix include St. Bernard? Maybe. True. True! St. Bernard! Kaya has 28.1% St. Bernard. Maybe this helps explain why she looks or acts the way she does. The St. Bernard is a gentle giant that has been saving lives in the Swiss Alps for centuries. These easygoing guys can make great family additions as long as you are okay with cleaning up slobber. Fun fact, it is estimated that St. Bernards have saved over 2,000 people during the three centuries they've been doing rescue work. That's also a big breed. Holy fuck. Next. A Manchester Terrier toy. False. Our analysis... Yeah, I know. Chow Chow. Could be. What do we think? I'm going to say Chow Chow. Kaya has 23% 7 Chow Chow. Maybe this explains a little why she looks or acts the way she does. This is the looking dog breed. Is proud, independent. Oh my God. Is that why she fucking bites so much? Okay, I'm beginning to... I just realized something. This is one yes, one no. Every single time. It gives me like a big breed that kind of looks like her and then a breed that looks nothing like her and then goes, which one is it? But we figured it out. The distinctive looking dog breed is a proud independent spirit and some describe as cat-like, often aloof and suspicious of strangers. The Chow Chow may not be a cuddly buddy, but for the right person, they are a fiercely loyal companion. A blue tongue and lips aren't the only unique things about Chow Chow's appearance. Did you know that a blue-coated Chow usually has a blue or gray nose? Great job. View all of Kaya's breeds in the video above. Review your breed results and share this game with your friends. Embark tested your dog for hundreds of breeds to show what makes Kaya uniquely Kaya. Facebook ads video. One parent is a chow chow. The other parent is a Tibetan Mastiff. And then another parent is a St. Bernard. How'd you get a St. Bernard to fuck a Chow Chow? 23.7% Chow Chow, 28.1% St. Bernard, and 48.2% Tibetan Mastiff. 100% Kaya. There it is. No, the St. Bernard fucked the Mastiff. St. Bernard is a grandparent. Dog loot box opening. Kaya is the giant of Kandahar. Okay, let's view the breed results now. Kaya's health results are ready. Unlock results for 230 plus health conditions, traits, and other genetic data to help your dog live her best life. She is 4.1% wolfy. What the fuck? That, it says her wolfiness is high. How wolfy is my dog? Most dogs have wolfiness score of 1% or less. We find populations of breeds with higher scores of 2.2 to 4% occasionally, and unique dogs with scores of 5% or above more rarely. 
Your dog's wolfiness score is not a measurement of uh, is not a measurement of recent is not a measure of recent dog wolf hybridization and does not necessarily indicate that your dog has some recent wolf ancestors. If your dog has recent wolf ancestors, you will see that in the breed mix report. Instead, the wolfiness score is based on the number of ancient genetic variants your dog has in our unique wolfiness marker panel. Wolfiness scores up to 10% are almost always due to ancient wolf genes that survived many generations rather than any recent wolf ancestors. These ancient genes may be a few thousand years old or even may date back to the original domestication event 15,000 years ago. They are bits of a wild past that survive in your dog. Your dog's wolfiness score is based on hundreds of markers across genome. Dogs or almost all of them are the same. The wolves tend to be different. These markers are through the relate are thought to be related to domestication gene sweeps where early dogs were selected for some traits. Scientists have known about domestication gene sweeps for years, but do not know each sweep occurred by finding rare dogs carrying an ancient variant of a certain marker. We can make associations with behavior, size, metabolism, and development that likely cause these unique signatures of dogginess in the genome. There's more to come. This is a HIPAA violation. Yeah, we fucked up. That's Kaya, basically, but in dog form. Her parents were both Mastiff mixes. One was mixed with a Chow. The other was with a Bernard. 25% Chow, 25% Mastiff, and another 25 Mastiff, 25 St. Bernard. It makes sense because the Tibetan Mastiff, as we did looked at through all of our fucking uh, research over the course of the past week, has always been, like, cut with, uh, you know, Chow Chows and shit. So it turns out she's 48, I mean, she's 50% Tibetan Massive and a little bit of St. Bernard, a little bit of Chow Chow, which means she's going to be pretty big, I think. Does this mean it will be smaller? I don't know. Kaya is probably going to be smaller than the usual Mastiff if one parent was a Chow. Chow Chows are not very big. I mean, they can be. Oh, that's a St. Bernard, right? This is a photo of a, of a St. Bernard. This is what the fuck a St. Bernard looks like. St. Bernard females average on like 120 pounds to 140 pounds. Okay, let's look at Chow Chow's first. Chow Chow breed information. American Kennel Club. Dog of ancient China. Meet the Chow Chow. I'm pretty sure uh, a lot of people bred the masses with the Chow Chows too to get like different colors, right? Isn't that what they were saying? Like originally, that's probably where it comes from. The Chow Chow is a member of the non-sporting group. They measure 17 to 20 inches, weighing 45 to 70 pounds. This is one of the world's oldest breeds. Its existence can be traced back to China's Han Dynasty of over 2,000 years ago or even earlier. The breed was originally used as a hunting dog in ancient China, but it's played many roles in its long history as companion to Chinese nobles garter, hauler, and all-around working dog. In the 1820s, Chow Chows were exhibited at the London Zoo as the wild dogs of China, but they didn't really catch on in the West until Queen Victoria, an inveterate dog lover, acquired one later in the century. They were first shown in America in 1890. The Chow Chow is noted for its regal demeanor and cleanliness. They housebreak easily, have little doggy odor, and are known to be as fastidious as cats. Chows are devoted to their families, but typically quiet. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. Nah. Nah. <laughs> Let me tell you, she didn't get those fucking traits. I'll tell you that, okay? Definitely, maybe cat-like in her demeanor, but certainly not easy to fucking housebreak, okay? Holy fuck, she is like, her dookie metrics are off the charts. It's like 80% of the... T uh, well, actually, her dookie metrics are like 100% on a pad or outside. But her PB metrics are like 70% in, like on the thing, on the pee pad or outside. And then 30% just random, casual. You will never, ever figure out why, how, or when... She decided to piss in the place that she pissed at. You're like, what the fuck is going on in your mind, man? Aloof and independent. Early socialization is recommended to offset the breed's natural reserve towards strangers. 
and training should be tailored to their sensitive nature. Serene and adaptable, with no special exercise needs, chows happily take to city life. They are intolerant of heat and should not be exercised in hot weather. Their thick double coat comes in two varieties, rough and smooth. The rough version has an abundant straight standoff outer coat with a harsh texture, and the smooth variety has a hard, dense, smooth outer coat. Both coats require regular grooming. Give them a thorough brush twice a week and a monthly bath. For more on the Chow Chow and all of your favorite breeds, go to akc.org. Wait, isn't Kaya's tongue, I think, is like bluish. There's mixes described here, including St. Bernard and Chow Chow. Top 15 Tibetan Mastiff uh, breed mixes. What's the difference between a mixed breed and a hybrid? Mixed breeds are often mistakenly called hybrids. A hybrid is an animal that was created by mixing two different breeds. Examples are Cabot. When we're talking about dogs, two parents of the same species, but different breeds. Are Tibetan Mastiff breeds. Uh, well, you're familiar with a cockapoo. And the Golden Doodle. But these mixes breeds are true. But before we move on, a word of caution. Never safe to expect all breeds of the same temperament. They they mix Tibetan Mastiffs and Siberian, Siberian Huskies. How the fuck do you mix a Tibetan Mastiff and a Corgi? That's, a, that's insane. German Shepherd, Rottweiler, Caucasian Shepherd. That one makes the most sense. That's basically the same fucking dog, but in a different, more wolfy. Two enormous dogs with aggressive tendencies. Neither is considered an appropriate choice for an inexperienced dog owner. Both require socialism and firm training. Great Dane? What the fuck? Likely where variables are separation, anxiety, and aggression level. The GD is known as a gentle and reserved giant. St. Bernard mix. Stranger reaction and drooling. The St. Bernard is friendly to strangers as he is to family. The Tibetan massive, not so much. With St. Bernard, though, there's a price to pay for all the sweetness. He's a heavy drooler. The St. Bernard in this mix could uh, soften the Tibetan massive stranger wariness, or the match could result in a less friendly St. Bernard. Both the St. Bernard and uh, Tibetan massive are gentle, attentive, and loving to the family. They're both thick-coated breeds that have a high tolerance for cold. Both are heavy shedders, though. The TM's coat is easier to maintain. Chow. Aggressive tendencies, strong will, and independence. The Chow Chow is even more likely to be aggressive than the Tibetan Mastiff. Devotion, trainability, and dominance. The Chow can be intensely loyal, but he's a one-person dog. He's exceptionally strong-willed and is not known for obedience. He believes he should be the boss and needs strict training. This mix would likely result in a dog with a high level of aggression that's difficult to tame. With the Chow's intense devotion to one person, this cross can be dangerously overprotective. We do not recommend this Tibetan massive mix for uh, families or young children. Both have aggressive tendencies, and the Chow Chow is known to bite when provoked or annoyed. Yeah, no fucking shot. Dog astrology is trying to predict behavior and mixes. So... For the record, for the record, for those of you who don't understand, the only reason why I look at this, like I said already, I don't give a fuck what Kaya is because she's my baby. But the reason why I look at stuff like this is to understand the, the possible heritable traits because those things do exist and they are real. So I want to know what the possible heritable traits are so that I know what will be easier to train and what I need to train against. Like, for example, don't kid herself. You want her to be big. I mean, that's one aspect of it. But at this point, it doesn't even fucking matter to me. You know what I mean? I love her. I, I, she's already imprinted on me. Breeze don't determine the dog's temperament. Training does. I agree. I 100% agree with this. As you know, I am the uh, father of a pit bull that passed away. And the reason why, uh, like, I trained the living fuck out of fish was because I was terrified of him being like an aggressive pit bull because everyone always is like, oh, pit bulls eat babies, pit bulls eat babies. So I made sure that he ate a steady diet of babies. I was like, do you have a bad vibe? I would go to the Planned Parenthood on a, on a weekly basis and I'd say, give me your best babies. I need my pit bull to eat them. And they were like, of course, sir. How much of a communist are you? And I was like, I love Nancy Pelosi. And they were like, oh, okay, here, have some babies then. The reality is I trained the fuck out of fish because I was worried that he was going to be a baby eater. Okay. Like I, it was my first dog. I didn't know anything about dogs. I was legitimately fucking terrified that, uh, you know, he was going to go and like bite someone or some shit, you know, like I, cause it, it, remember a time if you're a dog owner, remember a time when you weren't 
if you can. You don't know if uh, if your dog is, is going to be, like, aggressive or not. Once you have a dog and you train a dog from birth, it's over. You know everything is, like, uh, uh, you know, everything is edu education. Everything is training. That's the reason why we look at breed specifics, so that you know what to uh, train against. The Chow Chow one is a little scary, in my opinion. An all-purpose dog in ancient China represents a picture of a muscular, deep-chested aristocrat. Blah, 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 blah. I don't really care about that. Let's look at the pros and cons of owning a Chow Chow. Ancient dog breed. Chow Chow dates back at least 2,000 years. I love this guy. Ancient dog breed. <laughs> Despite being in existence for a really long time, they still remain one of the most popular dogs out there. The reason behind this? Let's find out later on, because for today's video, We'll talk about the pros and cons of owning one of these wonderful dogs. Perhaps one of the first things that you'll notice about Chow Chow is their bear-like appearance. True to their noble appearance, these dogs appearance. tend to be aloof, territorial, and even spoiled at times. However, those who can handle them properly will know that Chow Chows are actually devoted, loyal, and protective dogs. As we go through this video, We'll understand more about why they are loved by many people. Hi there and welcome to Animal Insider. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe first to our channel for your daily dose of dog related content. I just sent this to my brother and he said Fiona is Chow Chow too. And Fifi is vicious. Um, <clears throat> no, that actually makes me very happy to learn because that way I now know that uh, she's trainable just like fiona is you know what i mean as mentioned earlier for today's video we'll talk about the pros and cons of owning a chow chow what does this ancient dog breed from china have to offer let's all find out pros one chow chows have a unique appearance chow chows are known for their blue black tongues in ancient china have you begun the next round of vaccinations or still... Brother, I got my first round of vaccines this Monday. I have to wait three more weeks. China, this feature was believed to draw away bad spirits. Today, their blue-black tongues are one of the features that make them unique and favored by many people. Take note that while they are young, their tongue is pink in color. It gradually transforms into blue-black as they mature. They also have a thick coat that can either be smooth or rough. This gives them a bear or lion-like appearance. Their short tail is curled at the back, and they have a short and stilted gait. Nevertheless, they still display a strong, sturdy body. If you're looking for a dog that has a distinct appearance and personality, you should highly consider this breed. 2. Chow Chows have a cat-like nature. Reserved and independent, Chow Chows will never go up on your lap, which is why they're described as having a cat-like nature. They will instead tell you that they love you by sitting close next to you, such as beside your feet. Even though they're not the sweetest dogs out there, Chow Chows uh -huh. will protect you from any threats and danger in their own ways. 3. Chow Chows have low exercise needs Good news for laid-back people! Chow Chows, unlike other dog breeds, do not like to stay outside too much. Usually, one long walk will be enough to satisfy their exercise needs. In fact, some are even ready to go inside after 15 minutes of being outside. Of course, you would want them to stay a little longer to promote a healthier lifestyle. Ideally, two 15-minute walks a day works for these dogs. They will also appreciate... How'd you figure out your dog's breed? Spitballed it, brother. Magic. Ancient magic. The dark arts. Going on hikes. But make sure not to overexercise them. Too much strenuous activity can cause them to overheat, especially when it's hot or humid. Always bring fresh water with you whenever you take them out in public. I meant like, goddamn, what side did you use? Uh, Embark. Four. Chow Chows are very loyal dogs. Once you earn their respect, you will know how loyal these dogs can be to you and to those who they consider as part of their pack. As protective dogs, they will never hesitate to jump into action if they sense that a member of their family is in danger. 
However, because their loyalty can cause them to be aggressive, this breed will need an owner who is strong and dominant. Once they perceive you as a weak leader, they will not hesitate to take the role of the alpha. With okay, this is literally my mom. Like, like, no disrespect to her, you know? I think she did a pretty fucking good job of, you know, educating your boy, me. But having said that, she is unfortunately very bad with, she's unfortunately very bad with, uh, what do you call it? With, with uh, Ikaya. Kids aren't dogs though, lol. Yeah. Okay, so we got two St. Bernards. They make a St. Bernard. We got two Tibetan Mastiffs. They make a Tibetan Mastiff. Then a Tibetan Mastiff falls in love with a St. Bernard, and then they have a Tibetan Mastiff-St. Bernard mix. That's the one side. And the other side, you have two Tibetan Mastiffs, or a Tibetan Mastiff and a Tibetan Mastiff mix make a Tibetan Mastiff mix. On this side, you have two Chow Chows that make a Chow Chow. The Tibetan Mastiff mix and the Chow Chow make a Chow Chow mix. That is how you arrive at Kaya. According to the DNA results, this is dog racism through Kaya's mitochondrial DNA. We trace her mother's ancestry back. The dogs became friends. The female lineage can be traced back to 15,000 years ago to central Asian wolves that were domesticated in modern dogs. Part of the large A1D haplogroup. group. This common haplotype occurs in village dogs all around the world. 29. I mean, this is like way too deep into the fucking science. They gave me a fucking dog DLC, bro. This shit is crazy. You go on. And they're like, hey, by the way, you got to download this doggy DLC if you want to fucking know more about the dog that we just gave you all this information on. Oh, they're, they're preparing the fucking... What? They're preparing the traits reports? We'll email you once ready? Oh, I don't even get it now? That's whack. Apparently, there's like... Close family, too. Bro, that's crazy. This is a close relative of this dog. Like, look at this. Like, how wild is that? The oh, fuck? Dude, dogs are insane, dude. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post this on Twitter.